Hello, David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. I am here with a gentleman who is going to take us through a journey. And it's a very interesting journey because it's part nostalgia and part James Bond coming together. Neil Vance, welcome to the show. Thank you, David. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Now, Neil, for the uninitiated, we always like to talk about, um, you know, kind of your role and responsibility. So you are part of the Perth Mint and you kind of, I'll just come right out. Of it. The, the Perth Mint kind of wowed the Bond audience because you came up with some incredible collectibles that a lot of us weren't expecting. But what is, what's your role at the Perth Mint? Yeah, David, I'm the general manager of Minted Products. So basically it means I'm responsible for product development and sales of anything that we make at the Mint itself. Um, and one of our major uh, focuses over the last few years has been on licensed products. So we've just come off making Star Trek coins, for example, for five years. And on the other side of the coin, so to speak, we've been doing Simpsons coins. So a lot of fun around the Simpsons, but we had always been really interested in James Bond. We think it's one of the, the great brands and franchises um, that's been around for so long. And uh, we were lucky enough to launch Coins in February this year, and they've done very well for us. Yeah, and Coins and a, a lot of other variable stuff. But I've got to start with the basics because I'm, I, I start to conjure up all types of imagination. I'm thinking of you in an office and you're doing ideation with your group and you're like, all right, we did Simpsons, we did Star Trek. What's next? Why Bond? What was the germ of Bond? Well, I think um, so many people have grown up with Bond. I mean, I'm a, I'm a kid of the 70s, so I grew up with the Roger Moore movies. You know, it was just a highlight when the movies came out and my dad took me to the movies um, to see the Bond movies during that period. And I think they've just managed to um, uh, re-energise the franchise with different actors yeah. over the years. Um, you know, I think Daniel Craig's taken it to a whole new level with the last um, four movies and the fifth to come. So, yeah, I just think it's uh, a, a brand that appeals to huge um, age groups, you know, from mm -hmm. older collectors right through to, to younger people who are looking to buy something different. Yeah. And it's interesting, too, because I think a lot of people, they see the offering from the Perth Mint and they go, well, there's there's a bond coin. This is fantastic. Or, you know, a piece of gold. But Obviously, this has got to be a bit of a journey. So you come up with, you know, we should look into bond, but then you've got to make it happen. What's that process even like? Yeah, look, it's it's a, it's been a quite a long process. We've actually been chasing uh, the bond franchise for about three or four years. Um, wow! And uh, it's 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 been an interesting process. I, I guess what happens is the first point you have to get to is um, signing a contract where. Um, the licensor feels comfortable with us as a company. Um, the Perth Mint is a government-owned mint, so at the end of the day, mm. they do feel comfort with the fact that we're we're government-owned from that perspective. And we've got a good track record of um, delivering um, good licensed products that are faithful to the brand. Right. The next thing when we've signed a contract is we get a, um, a style guide from the licensor themselves. So you actually get a, a whole... Um, book, so to speak, of designs, of how to treat that brand, and you absolutely cannot um, go off base, so to speak, and create whatever you like. You've really got to stick within that style guide. But the key to it also is then to be creative on our side, but work within that style guide and actually have product approved that both sides are going to actually appreciate, but we think will really appeal to the collectors. So I've seen the Quantum of Solace, the Skyfall, and the Spectre, what I call the Bond Bible, the style guides. It's very interesting. I mean, you've, you've obviously poured through them as well, where, you know, you can't have Bond in certain circumstances, smoking and, you know, things like that. So you come up as a company with a series of ideas. Do you need to then pitch them to Eon to say, here are 25 ideas? Do they whittle them down to five? Uh, absolutely. So at the start, um, I guess I guess with a lot of licenses, um, things do start off a little bit uh, uh, conservative at the start. So our first few coins have gone with the very traditional gun barrel image and the 007 logo. Mm -hmm. um, Eon then get a level of comfort with us 
and you can start, um, uh, I guess, uh, pushing the envelope, so to speak. So, for example, we've just had approval on a very exciting series for next year, mm. um, whereby we're going to do all 25 movies. Uh, and what we've actually done is we've pulled apart the original movie poster and used some elements of it and just created these really, really cool designs. So we will have 25 coins coming out next year that are, are going to be very exciting to see. So I've got to, I'm going to deviate just for a little bit because when I was telling people in the Bond community, and, and the Bond community grows every day, um, I said to them, I'm doing this, this interview with the Perth Mint, and they were very familiar with your offering. One of the things they said was, it's wonderful because you know, depending on what age you are, I'm 52 years old, you know, you collected stamps and coins and things, but you also loved these nostalgic movies, Star Trek, Star Wars, James Bond. This is an intertwining together. Did you know that James Bond was going to have the impact, the offerings that you had that they now have into the community? Yeah, we really believed it was going to have a strong impact. And that's probably why we've been chasing it for four years. Uh, we, we really saw... Um, after Star Trek coming to an end, um, we felt Bond was a really strong license that would, I mean, we have it for the next three years. We're very confident we'll be able to deliver a lot of product to satisfy uh, Bond collectors over the next three years. And um, it, as I said, with 25 movies, um, there's so much scope um, yeah. within those three years to do lots of different things. So I have to... Um pay you and your company a huge compliment Our, earlier today it's global james bond day today when we're filming this by the way <laughs> i did an unboxing review of this piece which we're showing at the end of this interview and i was gobsmacked i was so wonderfully surprised because to me it was like opening up something from q branch where you open the box and then you have another wonderful box that has four magnets and then you open up and then you have a soft pillow and then you have a booklet that tells you all about it and then it's nested in an in an egg-like nest and you pull that out and then there's the treasure i mean how much thought goes into the packaging and the 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 wow factor to the bond fan yeah look we've got a whole product development team um here in perth um, we've got six designers on staff um we've got a packaging expert so we know from years of uh, making coins how important the whole package is, and particularly when you move into the license field. Mm. That packaging is a really strong part of the product um, to those people who are involved in that, that brand, so to speak. So it's just like uh, what you were saying about the unpackaging for yourself. That's what we want people to feel. We want people to feel excited when, when they open the product and get to that beautiful coin at the end of the day. You'll see it in the video. It's like this this wonderful discovery. It was almost like a, a mini bond moment, if you will, where you're finding out these things and and right at the end there, that's that's the treasure. Um, I I asked myself a question, and 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 you'll probably be able to answer this, but I love the image because as a fan, we've been seeing trailers and you see that wonderful jump with the motorcycle in Matera, which has become indelible to no time to die, as says the DB5. But you had to pick something iconic, obviously, for the first coin. Why this image? Why the motorcycle jump? Yeah, look, uh, we were speaking to Eon, and they were very clear that this was going to be the great stunt in the movie. Um, very recognizable. So we that's the one we wanted to go with. Um, our artists went to work on it, and we think we've uh, done a great job of delivering that image on a silver coin. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and and I'll, I'll tell you, the uh, the other one that we did a review on, which I'm sure you recognize, yeah. even, even on a Skype, this one, I was shocked, not in a bad way, almost in a curious way, the, the size of this. I mean, the coin itself in there, because obviously it's gold, so you can't have a giant nugget of it. But even the packaging of this, I mean, it's almost like a wallet size keepsake so even that obviously goes through the design process i would imagine absolutely yep yeah look the whole idea behind that is it's a half gram of gold so it's an ideal product for people who want to buy their first gold coin it's it's affordable for gold and you still get that little bit of bond with it as well yeah that was so i'm going to bring up a word that you just said because one of the things i think that was embraced in a very positive way in the community was 
you could have the younger fan or the or the fan that just you know doesn't have the means. I mean, we we are going through a pandemic. Um, there are so many different approachable levels that the Perth Mint has created. You've got some uh, that are incredibly affordable, all the way up to obviously ones that would be seen more as an investment for the more serious collector. Was that part of the consciousness of it, of, of offering an entire line of investment? Absolutely. And you, you'll see that more over the next couple of years. I mean, we believe there's opportunities for certain very high value collectors where we get into very limited, um, larger size gold coins. Um, I know next year we're doing a seven ounce silver piece as well with um, mm -hmm. gold highlights to it. Um, we have the investment one ounce gold coin. Um, so, for example, in, in Australian dollars, that's probably at about, say, 3,000. Um, in US, it's probably uh, 2,200 to say, for example, roughly. Um, but that's aimed very firmly at people who are more on the investment side, but want to actually have a bit of bond in their investment portfolio. Yeah. And the interesting thing is during COVID, um, unfortunately with the pandemic, um, what it does spark is a serious interest in precious metal because people moved to that safe haven during um, the mm. pandemic. So mm -hmm. we've had huge interest in, in the gold investment coins. I feel like uh, you read my mind on my next question. I was going to ask <laughs> you, not just in the bond community, but what has been the reaction to these offerings? Oh, the reaction has been so positive. Um, the, we in Berlin, Berlin is the, the large money coin show every year and it we happened mm. in February just before COVID and we launched three coins there. We launched a silver proof collector coin, a silver investor collector coin and both of those sold out almost instantly. Um, we launched the gold investment coin which is nearly sold out so everything's gone very well so far and of course now we've got the little half gram gold you you've just shown yeah. and the no time to die which only launched in the last month so we, we've had a fantastic reaction um we've got lots of plans um for the next couple of years um distributors and collectors both interested in, in what's coming next all right tough question tough, I, I had to give you one because <laughs> you know I, i'm having a love fest over these but um we had some news 48 hours ago about the film being delayed until april yeah. As a brand, what goes through your mind? What are the different thoughts? Yeah, really interesting one. We, we had a discussion about this when it came out um, within the team. The first thing we really had to do was actually go back to E.ON and ask them what they want us to do, because mm. we do have other No Time to Die products. And, you know, do they feel it's uh, applicable to launch or do we wait? And they've been great about it. They, they said... Um, you can still launch because the movie is still coming out. It's yeah. just been delayed. So from that point of view, we still feel comfortable with that. And I guess it's just going to build the anticipation further for when this movie finally does, um, does reach us. And the other side of it, you do understand why I guess it's getting pushed back, given um, I think yes. it's in the UK in particular, cinemas are closing again. They closed over here too, Regal Cinema, yeah. all that, and them closed. But I will tell you this, you said something that I will gravitate to, and that is the fact that people now need good news. They need things to consume, and they're consuming things online, but they're also consuming these wonderful collectibles. So this, uh, you know, I, not to sound too Jay Peterman, but this helps to fill the void of, you know, touching the movie in some way, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, as I said, I think it really builds anticipation towards it. And uh, I, I hope we're all in a better spot next year when uh, the movie comes out and we can all get along to the cinemas to see it. From your mouth, believe me. <laughs> Neil, we're going to actually do the unboxing at this point, but thank you so much for joining us today. This has been great. Thanks for having me, David. Good to Absolutely. Talk to Let's keep in touch. And as the new products uh, come out, we can talk about them further. This will be wonderful. Okay, great. Thanks, David. Take care. So now let's take an up close and personal look at the actual coins. I have them here and you can see them in the package. We're gonna do something though, because handling these, you can get a lot of uh, oils and fingerprints. So I'm doing kind of like my jazz hand uh, gloves. These are actually Omega gloves. Yeah, these are not my opera gloves. Insert jokes below. Nope, these are so I can handle things like watches, et cetera, without getting tons of fingerprints on it. I, I feel like a, I feel like a, an Omega doctor. 
is the, is the watch going to make it? I don't think it's going to make it. I think it is going to make it. All right. So let's first talk about this particular one right here. Now, we did um, just speak about this, but this is what I mean by the size of it. Look at the size of this coin. But it's so cool. It's in this neat little packaging, which kind of protects it. And then it's got this obviously plastic. And we're gonna we're getting up really close and personal so you can kind of take a look at that in all its glory. And the back of it as well. And this is, um, it has all the specifics like the gold content, which is uh, Troy ounces, it's 0 0.016, monetary denomination, two, finesse is 99.99, that is pretty high purity. Uh, minimum gross weight, 0.5 grams, just to give you some information. Okay, that's, that's cool, the bond coin. This is the one that I was definitely the most excited about because packaging, you know, take a look at this. It's got the Perth Mint packaging on it. Obviously, on the front, it's got the No Time to Die. You've got the Perth Mint on the back. But this is how the box comes, so it's not huge. I mean, as far as display, this is wonderful. It tells you what it is. It's one ounce silver proof coin. And obviously, it's got the little place to open this. So we are going to open this. Voila. And okay. So we've got the box inside. Yes, folks, this is an unboxing. Okay, empty. Oh, oh, very nice presentation. So you've got the nice emblazoned 007 logo right there. Take a look at the, uh, take a look at the box. Whoa, that is very cute, high tech. Nothing on the back, nothing in my hands. And I assume we just open this, yes. Oh, feels like it's magnetic. So I'm going to open this up. Okay, so you've got four magnets. Hello, camera. That's behind the scenes movie magic. We provide everything. So you see the magnetic top. I'm going to very gently put that down. And it comes with a booklet. Okay, so I'm not going to read the entire booklet right now, but it is about the coin and it's about the movie and it's got some wonderful pictures. We'll get some close-ups of the booklet so you can see that. But all right, so still nestled, still nestled in its box. You can see down here, it's got a small little pull tab. This is not easy with, <laughs> with gloves on. And you know something, it's in a protective case. So the gloves were overkill, but that's what we're all about, overkill. So again, it's got this pull tab to lift the coin so you don't have to dig into the flocking background to take it out. And you can see the nest. I'm showing you everything. All right. Wow. Okay. Let's see if this comes out. Yeah, I think it can. No time to die. And it is the bike jump. A lot of you have been super thrilled with that bike jump. I know I have um, in Matera. And it's got the 007. But look at the, look at the reflective nature of this. And then on the back, you've got the details. Queen Elizabeth, one ounce. 99999AG2020. I mean, talk about collectability. Talk about a beautiful coin. Uh, this is this is exactly what we were just talking about in the interview. Is that shock and awe? You know that that enthralling type of thing. And from a from a display standpoint, you know, I think that this really hits the mark as far as something that's really. Wonderful and interesting, but it's a box. It's a keepsake. It doesn't take up a lot of room. And it's a nice keepsake from the movie. Nice little memory piece, but I, I had to get one because it's just, to me, this is so cool. Coin collecting, stamp collecting, it is a bit nostalgic. And James Bond is nostalgic. So to me, it starts to intertwine a lot of that nostalgia that gravitates us right back to the franchise. I'm taking these gloves off. Why? I just, I don't need them on. Anyway, I um, hope you enjoyed this discussion about the Perth Mint and the coins that they have to offer. We'll put the links below. And this has been David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience. We'll see you real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be 
up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.